Few teams in the history of college basketball at any level can match the achievements of the 1991-92 Arkansas Tech Golden Suns. They finished with an overall record of 35 and one. They won their final 29 games in a row and each of their final 28 victories were by 12 points or more. After winning the AIC and NAIA District 17 titles, the Golden Suns breezed through the 1992 NAIA National Tournament, establishing tournament records for points scored and three-point field goals made along the way. Tech shot 60% from the field and 65% from three-point range during their five-game march through Jackson, Tennessee for the first national title in school history. Well, I, I coached that tournament, how you coach a, a baseball pitcher pitching a no-hitter. I kept my mouth shut. I thought, I just sat and watched. I don't think we probably used three timeouts in the whole five games. We just watched those kids play, and, and I like to say, I didn't want to jinx it, and I knew it was something special. Uh, just like John realized, it was something special, and we just let them play. And, you know, what was so funny, we were only playing, you know, six or seven kids. So everybody that we played, the, you can just see from the first time out, you know, they were substituting three or four kids at a time. So each game, each coach thought, you know, we're going to run this team down. We're just going to run them to death. There's no way they can keep going. Well, those kids had played that way the whole year. So you ain't going to run them down. And we were on such a roll that they were in such a zone and such a high that, uh, you know, I, that's one thing I think in coaching sometimes you can overcoach and, and mess those things up. And I was mature enough at that time to know a little bit to leave them alone. And I just left them alone and let them play. You know, after the first game, it was like, okay, that was the first game. This was probably our easiest victory right here. And then it just kept going from there. And it was it was basically a walk in the park. And Don Grell and Marla Goshen were on fire that tournament. Um, one thing about our team, about all the players that were on the floor, you never knew who the star was going to be from one game to the next. And that's why it was hard for people to guard us, to play us, to compete with us. Because if I was having a bad game, somebody else was going to pick it up. You couldn't focus on just one person. Yeah, I think Dawn and, and um, Stephanie and Marla, for sure, in those games were, they just couldn't miss almost. I mean, and it was, and it was not just each one of them shooting, it was everybody getting them open, each of them setting a screen to get each other open. And that's what I'm saying at that point, not a lot of people did that. And so screening and then somebody who just screened can also step out and shoot was difficult for other people to, to, to guard. Um, but they, they just, again, we had repped it so much, it was almost like practices were harder than games for us. Foley had first implemented motion offense when he became the Golden Suns head coach in 1987. With the 1991-92 team, he found the perfect group to implement his system and turn a lack of size into a strength rather than a weakness. You know, we needed equalizer, and I felt like motion was that. And I think that that's the reason that we were able to beat those teams with the 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", kids is because they couldn't guard kids like Stephanie out on the floor. And so you get a kid that's six foot that can shoot the you know, 15 foot jump shot and you're bringing her off screens. You know, that's hard for a 6'3", six, 6'4", six, kid that doesn't guard that very often. You get to have a chance to do that. Oh, I loved motional offense. Loved it, because it just gave us, it gave us the opportunity to do our thing. I mean, Coach Foley would break it down in practices to um, post play, to, you know, um, outside play. But for the most part, we were just kind of ad-libbing as we were out there, even though he gave us the, the, uh, the skills and practice to, to pull it off. At that time, obviously, for most of us, the best thing that ever happened to us. Um, um, back then, it was it was obviously something that every college athlete wants to be. Uh, again, not something that we set out necessarily to do, but um, very, very special. Um, the fans at Arkansas Tech were always so good to us and kind of accepted us. We all knew each other's parents. I mean, I, I, it was such a family atmosphere for us because we were all so close to living in Russellville, I mean, our, you know, me, Atkins, Allison Atkins, Dawn's Conway, or Greenbrier, Stephanie Conway. We were all so close, our families traveled with us, and so it was such a family event. I think we were just as happy for our fans as much as we were happy for ourselves.